Today I'm going to frame a few paintings. I'm going to frame them with what's referred to as a strip frame. And that's simply a piece of wood that is attached to the side of the stretcher of the painting. Now, that's done for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is it's pretty inexpensive and most artists can do that themselves. It doesn't require a lot of tools. And two, uh, it's a nice way to show a painting if you're having an exhibition. It's a good way to present your artwork without investing a lot of money into it. Uh, this is an example of a strip frame. This painting is framed with a walnut strip frame. What I'm going to use on these frames today is pine, and you can buy this material from any hardware store or home store. Uh, the measurement is quarter inch thick by an inch and a half deep. And the funny thing, I'm actually restoring a painting upstairs, or not a painting, but the frame of a painting that is a strip frame from 1959. The paintings from 1959. And the measurement of the molding that I'm going to use is still the same as what you can buy in your hardware store today. So before I do the, let's go upstairs and I'll show you the painting and uh, how this particular artist framed it. He changed it a little bit by adding a spacer, which makes the painting uh, appear to be floating in the frame. So it's sort of a simple way to make a float frame. So we'll take a look at that and then we'll come back down here and frame these paintings. This is a painting by the artist Robert Henry. It was painted in 1959 and I'm assuming that it was framed by the artist for an exhibition. Now something that he did that I think is pretty neat is he attached a piece of wood about three quarters of an inch from the surface of the painting. And what that piece of wood is, it's a quarter inch by quarter inch, it holds the strip molding off of the stretcher by about a quarter of an inch and gives you a, sort of a nice float frame. So uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking of framing your own artwork this way. So what I'll do here is I will cut this piece of molding. Again, this is the pine that I bought at the hardware store. I'll cut it to length and then I'll distress it and stain it and try to make it match the existing frame as best as I can. Uh, so I'll do that while I'm framing the other paintings downstairs. These are the tools I'll need to frame the painting. So I have my hammer and my nail set. And the nails I'm going to use are 7 eighths of an inch long by 17 gauge. And then I've got a good sharp handsaw. If you're going to stain or put a clear finish on the strips of wood, it's obviously better to do that before you attach it to the painting. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to take a little bit of Minwax stain that I've thinned with some paint thinner and stain the molding. Uh, but before I do that, this, this strip of molding here is actually for that Robert Henry painting. And so I'm going to want to distress that a little bit. And I'll just take my screwdriver and bang it up a little bit uh, as if it had sort of been around for a little while. Now I have my pieces of molding. They've been stained and they have a few coats of shellac on them. And I put this little box on my table that I made. Now you can buy a box like this. It's um, called a miter box. But it's pretty simple to make, and I'm going to use this to help me make straight cuts for my molding. I've marked my first piece to length, and now I'm going to cross cut it with my handsaw. After I've attached the molding, I go back and set the nails with a nail set. After the nails are set, I use burnt umber oil paint to fill the nail holes. And then I wipe off any of the excess with a paper towel with some paint thinner on it. Well, this frame is finished now. I'm really happy with the way it came out. It's very hard to tell which is the original wood and which is the piece that I just repaired or replaced. Anyway, let's go downstairs and I'll show you how I frame one of those other paintings. I've attached this block to my table and that's to catch the stretcher. So when I nail with my hammer and nail, I don't knock the stretcher out of square. So I can put some pressure on there and the canvas won't move. So you can see if I didn't have that piece of wood 
attached to my shop table, every time I struck the nail with a hammer, the canvas would want to push away from the hammer. I always attach the molding to the top and the bottom of the painting first, and then on the sides, the molding will then cover the end cut. Another thing I like to do is start my nails before I put the molding up against the frame. That just makes it easier because then I don't have to hold the nail. Alright, that's it. Then once the last piece of molding is on, I put a little bit of stain on a rag and just touch up the end grain. Well that's about it. Uh, it's really pretty simple. It's not very expensive. Uh, the piece of molding is $2.69. So it's a nice way to finish a painting. And the other nice thing about it is when you put your wire on the painting now, the painting will hang tight against the wall. And that's because the stretcher is set in the frame a half of an inch. So instead of your painting pitching forward, it will hang nice and tight right up against the wall. Anyway, hope you uh, got something out of the show and I'll uh, see you next time.